we want to give God praise, thanking him for such opportunity for us, brethren, to, to be together to study the word of God. For the scripture says heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God is going to remain. Hallelujah. I spoke to us on the will of God. If you've not watched that uh, video where I, I talked on knowing the will of God, just check on your knowing the will of God by N. N. Daniel and you're going to find the tip and you get to listen and get the revelation thereof. Praise God. So now we want to go deeper into it because, you know, the subject will of God is somehow a broad topic. You know, it's vast. So we, we need to bring it to a level also that we can implement it in our lives. And so I want to talk on how to know the will of God over a situation. Praise God. I believe this is one of the questions that so many people are asking. What is the will of God? How do I know the will of God in this situation? Now that I'm in this kind of situation, how do I know the will of God? Praise God. So I want us to try to check some things. I want us to study the word of God together. And as I unfold to us this revelation, I know your life is not going to be the same. Praise God. Your life is not going to be the same. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, first of all, when I was talking on the will of God, I made us to know of five different wills of God. And I did mention the first being the sovereign will of God, which can also be termed as the divine will. Or it can also be termed as God's will of decree. God's will of decree. In the previous message, I made us to understand what a decree is like. How powerful a decree is. I made us to understand a decree is unlike an oath, the power behind an oath. So God had to decree in order what he took an oath to himself over this called sovereign will. So I talked on the sovereign will. Then the second one was uh, God's will of command. And I made us to understand that his will of command has to do with his word. You can find his will of command from his word, the written word. That's why we are being charged to go to the word, to study the word, to bring the word into our being, to live the word until the word is able to come from our belly like rivers of living waters. Praise God. Then the third one, uh, I made us to also understand of the permissive will of God, which is never God's intention, but happening to please man, to please his son, his daughter, who has been praying over a situation for long. So that's the permissive will. Then we have the sacred will of God. And this one, I made us to know that he can only communicate it to some very few individuals very few individuals you might find 500 people and maybe god is able to communicate it just to about five out of the 500 people praise god then we also have the directive will of god and this will comes into play by the leadership of the holy ghost I just urge you to go back, watch the video, listen and study. I believe you're going to be blessed. Hallelujah. So those were the five points I talked on. So now I want to talk to us on how do I know the will of God over this situation? This situation. How? How do I know? I believe this is a question so many people have been asking. How do I know? Uh, man of God, I want to do this, but I don't know the will of God. Man of God, I feel like, but I'm doubting, I'm doubting. I don't know if it is the mind of God. Woman of God, I don't know. It's like, so this, this brings, you know, everyone wants to be aligned. 
Everyone wants to please God, you know. That's why you see Abraham had to do what? He had to live according to God's will. God's perfect will. God's perfect will. Living according to God's will for his life. He lived until God himself was able to attest and to testify. Praise God. So everyone wants to, to make sure that he, is on, he or she is on track. The Christians, no Christian I believe wants to live out of God's will. Because if you live saying you're a child of God, yet you live out of God's will. It's not like you will not become, you will not be God's child or a son or a daughter of God. You will be, but things will go wrong and there will not be anyone for you to throw the blame on. Praise God. So we want to, we want to look at uh, how to know, how you want to know the will of God. You want to know. Now, for instance, I want to talk to some unmarried people. Maybe you are a, a man or you are a woman. Let me just use the place of a damsel, a girl, and you're like standing confused because someone has come to ask your hand in marriage. Someone came and proposed to you of him trying to that he wants to marry you or he wants both of you to settle and bring up a family. And you're like, oh, oh, okay, okay. Maybe not even answering, but, and you're like, is this God's will? Maybe after going your way, you're like contemplating, is it God's will? So with such instances, with, with such instances, how do you know? The very first thing you have to know in order to judge what I'm talking to us now is I'm giving to us some spiritual guides and guidance for us to, to judge situations to see if actually they are according to God's will for our lives. So the very first thing is you have to use your human psychology to judge our things. Use what? Your human psychology. Use your, your mind. Try to work it out. You try to look. You can look. How is this guy? How is he? Is he the kind of man? Or uh, what are some of the things I need to know about him? Oh, this character. He's having this kind of character. Can I live with such a person? Can I change him? What if he does not change? Can I stick up? So you try to use what? Your mind to ask yourself questions. You try to work it out psychologically. You can observe, you think on it. You try to see if things can really work between two of you. So you have to always use your mind. Someone might even come to you and say, oh, I want us to do this thing. I want us to do this business. It is not just for you to, maybe you were uh, in the days of expectation or waiting on God, believing God for something, for his will, and someone just comes to you. Oh, sister, or oh, brother, I want us to do this business. I want us to do this. Don't just dive into it and you say, oh, okay, okay, yes, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. What if the person came with his own motive? Maybe wants to use you to make his money. Maybe the person has seen that you are that sharp. So sh you are that sharp in business. And knows that if two of you work together, then he is going to profit. Maybe he's very fast to think. He's very fast to, to do some things in order for him to take advantage over you. You don't know. Maybe he wants to work over your mind. So you have to use your, your psychology, your intellect. You have to use your mind to judge and see if this is the will of God or to see if this is good or you, you'll be able to, 
work it out. So you use your your mind, you use your your psychology, your reasoning. You try to reason out things. Try to reason out things. The business I intend doing, is it going to be a fruitful one? You ask yourself such questions. Uh, how do I do this, this, this? So you have to do what to use your mind. Even God himself said in Hosea 4, 6, that his people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Knowledge all around, not just on the word of God, but knowledge all around. The lack of knowledge. Praise God. Do you also know that we cannot reason spiritual things until we are able to reason the things with around? Until we are able to reason out the things within our environment. We are not able to get deeper. It is when you begin to think that you begin to think until you get deeper to a level where you can think until you enter the divine place where you can think of divine things, spirit or spiritual things. Praise God. So use your psychology to judge and know if this is the will of God. Hallelujah. Now the second one is check to see if it is is in line with the word of God. Check. Maybe an opportunity came up. Something just showed up. You have to check to see if it is in line with the word of God. I always like showing us this word of God. This is what God wants to give to us. His word. He wants to give us his word. Everything we need is in this word of God. Hallelujah. So you have to check to see if it is in line with the word of God. Look at, look at Jesus. He could deny the cross. But just because he saw that it was in line with the word. There were already prophecies. So many prophets, they did prophesy. Even the days of Jonah, Jonah also illustrated. The three days he had to be in the belly of the fish was a significance to show how the son of man would die. And in, for three days he would be in the grave. But he would come back to life at the third day. So Jonah actually illustrated what will be about the Messiah without knowing that God had to uh, unfold it. So you see, we have to always check to see if the opportunity is in line with the word of God. Because the word of God is the will of God. Are you getting me somebody? The word of God is the will of God. This word of God, the Bible, was not given for us to have commandments of prohibitions to say you will not do this. No. That was never God's intention. In fact, there was no word of God like a written Bible or manuscript or tablet for us to go and refer until when man got to sin. It was after when man sinned, a new nature came into his being and he began to live a new and not the kind of life. So the word of God came now for man to go back to the word so that through the word he can get to be consecrated. This word of God brings about consecration. This word of God. It brings about consecration. So you have to check. You have to have the word of God in you. To know. Because if you have the word of God in you. You will know that it is not God's plan for evil to befall you. And you will know that this is the will of the devil. The plan of the devil. 
I think uh, for me to just flash, there are three ways we have to know when it has to do, not three ways of God, but three wills in existence. We have the will of God, we have the will of man, then we have the will of the devil. Three different wills. The will of the devil is for the fall of man. The will of man is for his flesh not to receive pains or to be hurt. The will of God is for man to be safe. Are you getting me? The Holy Spirit just gave me this revelation. So, when you have an opportunity before you, in order not for your will to be done, you have to check on the word of God. You have to use the word of God to examine things, to see if according to the word of God, it is supposed to be like that or the opportunity you can grab it. Praise God. So, the how to know the will of God over a situation. So, I was talking to us of there is an opportunity like marriage opportunity, job opportunity. You have to use your intellect, your psychology to judge. Secondly, you have to check to see if the word of God permits you to do such a thing. Then the third one, asking God through prayers. You have to ask God. For instance, you have a, someone has actually proposed to you marriage that wants to marry you. You need to, you don't just need to say, yes, yes, I accept. You need to seek the face of God. Go in prayers. You can even pray upon praying after praying. You stay calm and you have some quiet moments and wait for God to talk to you. You could hear him or he could reveal it to you. He could show you something. Either to confirm that that's his will or to stop you from doing it, to let you know that that's not his will. So it's necessary in every situation for you to pray and ask the mind of God. Your psychology, you, using your psychology is not enough. Because there are some times that your psychology can fail. You should also go into prayers. You should judge it. So you have to pray over it. You need to take it in prayers and ask God. And God can either tell you or talk to you right there during your prayer time. Or he can talk to you in a revelation, in a vision, in a trance, in a dream. He can talk it to you because you have asked him. So he can tell you. And why you have asked him again and you are thinking about it, he can also communicate it to you through someone can cause someone to come your way and tell you something in line with your doubt. Praise God. Then the fourth one, there are five actually, five ways you can judge to know if this is the will of God. The fourth one is, if you are rightly standing, yet things do not work out in that line, this may not be the will of God. You understand? you're a christian you you're not you you're not compromising you are not compromising you're rightly standing with god yet things happen not to work the way they uh, you expected someone uh somehow promised you of something and all of a sudden or along the way the person changed his mind Someone promised you, uh, I, will, I want to take you to, to, I want you to travel to come and meet me here in, uh, to come and meet me here in Poland. 
or I want you to come to Cyprus and you don't know, you're just, oh, there's an opportunity. Yeah, this one says he, he or she wants me to come to Cyprus. Don't just be excited about it. He said, okay, uh, okay, thank you. I'll be so grateful. I'll be so grateful. Thank you that much. And after you have ended the talk or the call, your great time to ask God, not like asking him, is it your way for me to go? You could also pray. So you create time to seek the face of, of God concerning it. You could ask him, that father is it your way for me to go to cyprus or to go to the poland however if it is not your will let it not come to pass and you continue serving god and praying father let your will be done in my life connect me with the right people bring to me the things you have for me and you continue praying not like you have asked god and you have become prayerless no you continue in prayers and so as you ask God like that, as you keep on asking God after when you must have uh, used your mind to check it, to see if you can actually be in that place, if, you, if it is in line with the word of God. And as you're praying also, when it does not come to pass, don't trouble yourself to say, why, why did why did it not happen? Some Christians at times, they get angry that someone promised them and the person did not fulfill it. And they get angry. No, it's not for you to get angry. It might not be the will of God for you to go. And this is how some of our ladies, even especially in Africa, the year of, oh, I want you to come to this Asian country. I want you to come to this European country. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of them, they happen to go there. And they go and discover that the only option or choice they're having is to do prostitution. Maybe the person called them to come and do prostitution. So you have to always do what? To go into, check into, check to see if it is actually in line with God's word. To see if it is the will of God for you to go. You have to ask God through prayers. And upon doing all these things, if it does not happen, then know that it is not the will of God. That it might not be the will of God. Hallelujah. Then the fifth one is inquire from other servants of God. I want to remind you that there are people who can hear God clearly. When you hear of prophets, don't think that these people are jokers. Are you getting me? When you hear of some prayer warriors or intercessors, don't think these people are jokers. Intercessors start interceding. And while they are interceding, they get to the realms and their spiritual eyes get open. And they start seeing. So there are people who actually see, they can see, they can hear God. God can talk to them clearly. He can reveal something to them clearly. Have you ever gone to a man of God and he says, let's pray. And as you're praying, he opens his eyes and says, sister, do you know this, 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 this? Yes, man of God. So people, there are people who can actually hear God. So you could move to a man of God, just like we see Nicodemus. He saw Jesus. And the manner in which he was doing, doing his things, he knew that this man must come from God. And he went to inquire of Jesus. He went and he began to converse with Jesus. And Jesus began to tell him the mind of God, teaching him things about how you can become born again. Jesus taught him how to see, to enter the kingdom of God. Praise God. So we have, we, we have, to, we have to try to know what God's will 
is over a situation by trying to judge things trying to judge things praise god so you can actually inquire the mind of god over that situation uh, someone has proposed to you say man of god there is a brother who proposed me marriage that uh, he wants us to settle together but i told him that i should pray over it so i want you to help me to to pray or i want to seek the face of god i want you to to tell me if actually this is the will of God. And the man of God can tell you right the way. At times people come to me like that to ask the mind of God. And I tell them, why I'm talking with you, I just ask you one question, two questions, and I use the same answer and give it back to you. And so many people have tried and it's working. They have tried, some confess to me, some tell me, oh man of God, thank you, this, this. It's because there are some who can actually hear God. There are sometimes we men of God, we don't just sit and we listen for God to talk to us. And we are like, no, it's not like that. I can just be talking with you as two humans. But don't forget, we are spirits. Human beings are spirits. So we can be talking. And while we are talking, the Lord is already dropping it in my spirit. The Holy Spirit himself in me is already telling me, yeah, what she said is correct. No, what she, this is not, it's not correct. It will not work because of this, this, this. So she can be telling you things, but the Holy Spirit is giving you the interpretation of what she or he is telling you. That's why we don't just walk by sight. And there are some times that I, I can just look at you and at times I just start telling you something because I have discerned something, have sensed it in the spirit and I begin to communicate to you. Praise God. So the mind of God can actually be revealed or the will of God can be revealed by some people, people who can hear him. So if you are not up to a level where you can hear God, then it is possible for you to go to people who can hear God and they will channel you, they will tell you the mind of God. Hallelujah. So it has been nice talking uh, with us, teaching us about how we can judge to know the will of God over a situation in hand. All these principles have given, apply it implement it in every area it's gonna work praise god hallelujah so it has been nice talking with you it has been a, a nice time talking with you and i give god praise i give him glory for what is doing in your life and doing in our lives doing in our generation and i pray that the hand of god will rest upon you and the lord will keep you safe till christ comes again in jesus name precious name. Amen.